Hello, everybody. We're back. The Villa Generals, episode three. Uh, slightly different take today. Uh, Drew is not with us, so I'm stepping in as, as uh, the host. We are delighted to be joined by our first guest, Dave from the Villa Yam Yam. How are you doing, mate? I'm not too bad, mate. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Very well. And as always, wingman Cy Thompson. How you doing, buddy? All right, mate. You? Yeah, good, good. So Looking sexy as going? ever. Hey? Looking sexy as ever. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I went for a trim today. Went for That's a trim. good. That's good. We're having no mention of hard-ons or anything today either. Thank you. So let's move on. <laughs> that might be no, coming. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> yeah, we're not having any of that today. Never. No, 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 no. No, but seriously, Dave, lovely to have you with us, mate. Um, nice of you to join us. So, um, a quick introduction, I guess, Dave. Do you want to tell a little bit about yourself, mate? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Dave. I am the Villa Yum Yum on Twitter, Instagram and every other source you can think of. Uh, I've been on Twitter quite a while underneath my uh, other alias of Mini underscore Beast. Uh, I came away from Twitter because someone decided to be a massive knob. Uh, and then I came back as the Villa Yum Yum and I've started making a name for myself um, by just giving my opinion. And if you don't like it, that's what I Love say. It. Love it, mate. Love it. Love you to have you with us, mate, as I say. Yeah. So, uh, where do we start from that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think we're done, aren't we? We're, we're done. done. That's yeah, it. Yeah, bye. Take care. <laughs> um, so let's wrap up. Let's wrap up our thoughts and feelings from Everton, then, boys. Um, Sai, how, how did it go? How was it? Stale. <laughs> Stale. Yeah. Felt like a pre season game. Uh, again, I try and be positive and not be negative because um, we are a positive podcast sometimes. He's, um, he keeps telling me, Mr. Smith, on all his press conferences, that we're going to have a super end of a finished season. Well, wow. tell you what, lads, what a load of crap that was. We had nothing, did we? We had nothing in the final third. Midfield, beginning had a good first half, we had a crap second half. Louise had a crap first half and an amazing second half. Yeah. And I think it's just a story of us. The second half of the season, isn't it? we don't maybe look very good in the final third. Okay, you can have as many touches as you want in the final third of the box, but if we don't put the chances away, or at least, at least look a threat, then it ain't going to happen, is it? Yeah. I think they're all, mate, they're all on the beach, aren't they? Yeah, yeah I, I guess there's that, there's that kind of feeling now that the boys have we, we, we've survived, we're safe. Um, some of them will want to go out there and play some decent football and still make an impression, but maybe the majority of them have. Are still playing for the club. They're still fighting. They're still playing football, but ultimately they know they're safe. They all know that this summer's going to be massive, and and they're buzzing for the start of next season. I used uh, I used the word laboured, and that's what it was. That was his life. It was a laboured performance. Yeah. What do you reckon, Dave? What are your views, mate? I think to be honest with you, it was the best I've seen McGinn play for a, a very very long while. He's been he's looks he's been over the last few games as well as Dougie. He's looked jaded. They both look jaded. They both look like they're blown out of their asses come a certain set of time. One, just like Sai said, one has a crap first half. The other one has a, have a, has a better second half. And it's been like that with, with, um, with, with them pair for virtually since, I would say, February. Um, I'm getting sick and tired of Ming booting it 50 yards up the field to a, to a striker. You know, Kieran, Kieran, Kieran's and Watkins and strengths isn't their height. It's played to the feet. And that's what we've lacked. We've lacked with Jack being out and Barkley being, apart from that Everton game, non-existent. Um, you know, we've lacked things in that final third. We've lacked that spark of someone just going, right, just cutting out that, that, that killer pass or that killer cross. Um, you know, yeah. nothing against Kieran at the end of the day, because I thought for what he was getting delivery wise, he did bloody brilliant to say that it was his Dave, Dave just, stop, just on the, um, you know, on the, on the Ming's hoofing it all. Yeah, yeah. He, has, he has been hoofing it all. I found against Everton, though, he wasn't hoofing it all. Yeah. And the, the game was suited for Davies, hoofing the ball up in the air. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't hoofing the ball. So I was thinking, well, the last few games he's been hoofing the ball. And now he's not been hoofing the ball. And we got a big man up front. It was just yeah. totally, we totally just like missed Davies totally. I felt sorry for Davies. I, I miss. I feel sorry for Davis, but again, it's like again that would have been a perfect game for West to to get a few minutes underneath his belt as well from the start. Of, you know, um, if that was going to be the tactic from number one, why not go four four two? Have two big men and use Kieran's pace on the break. But, yeah, you know, I think me, me and Az have been open about that, but um, unfortunately, Smith don't change his formations to suit the teams, no. and I, and I think he's going to have to next season. Yeah. Well, then again, with the things way things are, you know, he's mentioning like it's an excited for summer for not just for fans, you know, I'm excited, but it's going to be exciting for fans. 
Let's see, see what happens, boys. But he's he's got to change things. He can't just keep on you know, yeah. relying on, you know. It just seems like we just don't have a plan B. And that plan B, uh, uh, you know, against Everton, was, let's bring Jack on. But we can't keep on relying on Jack. And this is the problem. He's had that reoccurring shin injury, you know. Um, we'll just say, because again, you know, I don't like being negative about the Villa. I like being positive. But I agree with Si. It was lackluster. It was a bit like, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like a it was like one of them fireworks you get from down the shop. You strike it and then you just go, and that's it. You don't go to your feet. <laughs> yeah, we missed Watkins, I think, didn't we? Yeah, Watkins was a big time. miss for us. Like I said in my tweet just, just a few days ago, I said Watkins plays in that game and we win it in my yeah, eyes. Yeah, I, think, like, I think we could we could have nicked that one 2-0. Um, uh, yeah, big, big loss with cash going off. I think that possibly may have deterred the potential of Wesley coming on to join Davis in the last yeah. 15. Um <sighs> I don't think the intention was to get Elmo on that field. Uh, you know, I think his minutes are far and few between now. Um, you know, Cash is obviously the main man, and so that was never expected, which is unfortunate. Um, be interesting to see how he how he plays it in the next few games. Palace on uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, with, with those movements around and Cash being out, Elmo comes in, I guess, doesn't he? Unfortunately, oh, yeah. Unfortunately yeah. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. They've, they've got rid of... Gilly's now back over in France. And to be honest with you, I feel sorry for the bloke because, you know, he's been car bash back over to France. And I think, really, I'd go as far as to say he was one of the players who, who stepped up to save our season last season, as well as Dougie and, uh, and yeah. Cons, really. Yeah, I think I'll that's just, a good shout for that. Very, very quick on Gilbert. I think Smith's played that very clever. Very clever. He's shipped him out. He's got his hunger back. He's got his form back. And he'll come back a better player. Yeah. I can't knock Smith for Gilbert going on loan because I think he's done the right thing there, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. He's I, come, I, I, and he'll come back brilliant with confidence. I do agree with you, T. I think, you know, there was a lot of talk about uh, the, the people's player, Gilbert, going going away in January. But I was all for the move, really, because he wasn't going to get his game time. Elmo was second choice. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out for Freddie in the initial circumstances. But I believe truly that he'll return in the summer a much better player, a much better improved player, full of confidence, and raring to go and, and, and save and us money perfectly behind cash as number two back there, you know, and, and save us money yeah yeah we don't need to invest in a right back um we have one who's who's gone out and, and impressed albeit in the french leagues but he has impressed and i think i think he'll return with with something to prove and you know he's, he's not a terrible player he's not a fantastic player but you know a lot of the boys that we'll be bringing in this summer you know they'll be good players they'll be they'll be excitingly talented and um, and pr promising players, but not all of them will be world class when they arrive. You know, you've got to give players time to develop and learn. And um, I think Freddie's one of those, just just at the lower pay scale. So um, yeah, looking forward to having him back. Cool. So that's Everton. Uh, Palace tomorrow. How are we feeling about Palace tomorrow? I say. Uh... So you... <laughs> uh... One nil Villa. One nil Villa. Dave. 2-1 Villa. 2-1 Villa. I think I think with with what what he uh, being out for the, that Everton game, he's going to be a right. He's going to be he's going to be out to have a point to prove. Uh, have a point to prove. Yeah, and I, agree. Hope, I agree. Hopefully with Jack's starting, but I, I can't see. I think he's going to be on the bench again. Yeah, I think I think I think we are. I think we are want to uh, sell those part from last season as, as well. Yeah. That would be that would be that personally would be my team talk. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I don't think I can predict the score because um, I've been appalling with predictions. But I I do think it'll be a Villa win. Um, yeah, and like you say, what what he back? I think Ollie will will have a point to prove. You know, he should never have really been out for the last game. You know, that was a poor poor decision really. Um, and, and we'll go from there. So yeah, cool, brilliant. All right, uh, so uh, what, what do we say on the agenda? I'm just going through Drew's notes here. So what did Drew write? Um, touching on the FA, FA Cup, Youth Cup performances from last evening. How did that go? Great game. Another phenomenal performance from the young lads. Um, oozing class in that, in that, in that area. Um, what were your views, Dave? Did you get a chance to watch it? What did you Most think? The seniors, that's what I say. Fucking put them all in. No, um, I'll tell you what. Absolutely fantastic. Some of the... You've got to be excited for what's being produced at Villa. I mean, like literally, I was having a conversation with someone. I was like, since Jack and possibly Mark Albrighton, there's been no one you can basically get excited about thinking this kid could be world class. We've got what five, six, probably seven plays in that starting eleven. You can go, yep, he can go in as a replacement for Watty. Yeah, he can go on as a replacement for Trez. 
Yeah. There, there's, there is massive potential. And these lads are out to prove a point to say to Smith, look, you might need, a, you know, don't go and spend 40 million on Tam. Here you go. Yeah. Barry's waiting, lurking in the background, ready for a senior. He's, there's players on the fringes. And I mean, literally just, they're so close to being in that senior squad. It's unreal. Yeah, good. So, yeah, what I like about the moment with the youth team, the youth team is mirroring what, what Smith wants to do, how he wants to press, how he wants to play. And I, I'd go as far as to say, yeah, 11 of those players, you know, are outstanding, but it is a different, different level, isn't it? Yeah, different gravy. Different, yeah. different gravy. And I thought the man of the match for me, I thought that Lindley was just mopped everything up. He was, he was out, absolutely outstanding. And Chucker, he didn't particularly play very well, you know, for his standard. He wasn't, he wasn't, he played well. He was not, a standout not, man, was he last night? No, time? no. And, 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 and me and you, as are, I think uh, we've got slated for it. Brad Young. Yeah, he's phenomenal. I, I yeah. think he's better than Louis Barry. Yeah, I, I said that, didn't I? I got plenty of, plenty of responses last night on my tweet. I, I genuinely believe in 10 years' time, although Barry might have the, the greatest start and get, get to the higher level quicker, I feel like I feel like Brad Young is is a player, mate. He's got everything. He's hey, Joe, he's Joe, working Joe, strong. He's got both feet. He's class. He's class. Joe Cole said it himself. He's a rough diamond. If you yeah. if we smooth that rough diamond out, he's going to be a player. I agree. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be. A yeah, player. there's there's no one else in that in that in, in that team in that youth team that I'd want in front of goal from six yards out. Louis Barry every time. Yeah. But if I wanted an out and out striker to play and give me everything I needed without asking him for anything in particular and just knowing that he'll give me it, Brad Young is that man that I want in that place. And so yeah. for me, that, you know, as, as, a, as a striker in, in, in the younger days when I was playing, I wasn't a particularly great goal scorer, but I, but I could shift. I could, I could boss the defence about. I could put them in their place and I could do what I needed to do. So, and I think Brad Young is exactly that. And he's rapid, mate. He's got Here we are. Let's, put ourselves, let's, let's put ourselves on the spot. We'll start with you, Dave. If you have to choose, uh, let's say, four players out of that youth team, who are the four players you actually think are generally going to make the first team within the next three or four years? Brad Young, definitely. I think, as I think you boys have said, he's a complete striker. He reminds me of a potential Watkins. He can he can go, you know, he will blood, sweat and tears. He will do anything for the he's, start. And I tell you now, Matt, he's a Smith kind of striker. And I think he's a yeah. kind of striker we'll be looking at. Um, pre-season yeah totally mate totally agree yeah, and I, and the name is in on the end of my tongue now and I'll, I'll, I'd love to say it but he, he is he is Adam Johns, Adam Armstrong in my eyes yeah and you've got to yeah. remember you got to remember as well that, that kid had a stabbing he had yeah. a stabbing in a, in a Sol Hill Park so yeah. you know he's done well to come back to to what, to what he's doing yeah. definitely yeah. go on then Dave what other players we've got Brad Young in there uh, yeah Baz I think, I think again, you, as you said, he's potentially, he's just another jack in the making. He's just going to be world-class. He's going to he's going to hit stardom literally straight away. Yeah. That's, that's uh, two, three. Uh, Chewy, I think he's, the, um, yeah, I think, yeah. He, just different gravy. He's just literally just different gravy. It, it, some of the, like against Newcastle, I literally watched that game and I was like, what the hell am I watching? This is, you know, no. it was like someone he's playing... Fast. It was, it was like someone playing a game of FIFA on very easy. Yeah. It, was like, it was brilliant. It was like... He's, he's um, a 25-year-old pros playing in a 17-year-old body, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd go, I'd go as far as to say one of the centre-backs. I can't think of any names off the top of my head, but the centre-backs have been brilliant, you know. Revan. Yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I think I think the lads have... There's, there's not one person I can turn around and say, he doesn't deserve a call-up to the seniors in any way. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah, I'll say something controversial. I don't think Kessler. I don't think Kessler's any better than what I've seen around personally. Mm. I think his positioning is a bit. He loses the ball, so we're all crying out for Kessler to play a right back for the first team. He'll get found out straight away. Yeah. Kessler will. Yeah, I think he's a bit of a gap yet from Kessler personally. Yeah, yeah, no, interesting. So if you had to pick a player, not four, but if you had to pick one player, who would it be? Well, you know my thoughts. That, that chucker straight in, and I'd play him. I'd, I'd, I'd play him on uh, tomorrow, personally. Yeah, yeah. I think now the when is the final for the FA Youth? They're on about 29th of May at the Villa. So, so, it, so if I was Dean Smith, I'd be saying tomorrow is a chance for you to show me what you got. You've then got, you've got a little bit of time to breathe before the final. How many games we got left now? Is it? Uh, we've got Palace, we've got Spurs, and we've got um, Chelsea. Chelsea. He's, yeah, he's got to. He's got to give minutes to him. 
before the end of the season. I feel that way as well. Yeah, I feel that way. I think, yeah, I totally agree with you. And that's pro. And, and, and we're all going about progress. Progress for me now is 50 points. Progress for me is an FA Youth Cup final. Brilliant. And then the next progress for me is some of those lads getting minutes in the first team. That's, prog- that's progression. If Smith don't do that, then the progression's slightly gone off the boil a little bit. Isn't it? He's got to get. He's got to get some of those lads minutes. I think, gotta... I, think, I think you'll find all those names we've mentioned today uh, involved in pre-season antics as well. No doubt. I think you know, in in the especially in the local friendlies, Tamworth that we often do, Walsall that we see. I think we'll see those boys play. For me, um, and I was talking about it with uh, Nilesh Billings together the other day. Um, I think Arjan is Arjan is an underrated player in the middle of that park. There's, there's something about him. I. He's very, uh, he's very astute, he's very stable, he's very solid, he's very understanding of the game, he's tactically aware. Uh, his passing is delightful at times. Um, he, plays as a, he plays as number eight and the number six yeah, as well, yeah, which is, you know. Yeah, and, and I think he's a credit credit to, to the academy and I think he's a credit to the club and, and the community that he represents, you know. I, I think agree. It's great to see him. So um, I'd have Arjan, I think, as mine. You know, obviously Chooks would be in there. Uh, Louis Barry, but for me, Arjan, I think I'd love to see him prosper and, and get to the first team. Really you know good. who Arjan reminds me of back in the, back in the days? A Gareth Barry. He did his job properly. He was solid. He just sat in the middle of the park and mopped up. He was one of them type of players that you never noticed through the game, but when he did something class, you noticed it. Yeah, you know I mean, he's that. He's got that potential just to literally be a person you just don't see, and then all of a sudden he will do a world class pass like that. Yeah, there's potent. There is a lot of potential with the lad, and you know, fair, fair play, fair play to him. As you said, for the community, um, he he comes from. You know, you, you don't get many, you don't get many players coming through, and it's a shame, really. But again, he's he's got potential to go far with Villa, and you yeah. know, and we'll I see agree. what happens. I think I think a lot of credit needs to go to our senior players as well, with particularly with the likes of Arjan. You know, Neil Taylor has been a has been an absolute. Absolute rock, I think, for Arjan in regards to you know mentoring him. You know, Neil Taylor's not the not the most prolific or, or excellent player in the world, but he's certainly got the right understanding of, of players in that in that situation. And I think I think players like like Neil Taylor to sort of support Arjan. And you know, I, I just I think it's lovely. I think it's great to see. I'm so proud of the club for doing all of these great things with diversity. It's a fair, it's a, it's a, fair, it's a fair tale, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah, a fairy tale, yeah. and, and yeah. I full credit to the lad. I full credit to the lad. Full credit to the family. Yeah, Let, let's hope he makes it. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely agree. Good. All right. So let's move on to some quick fire then. So we've just got a few quick fire questions. These are random as hell these days. Um, so league or Champions League? So you're a club Villa next year. We're in a position where we are fighting for the league hypothetically, um, but we're also maybe um, Champions League. Which which one do we prioritise? League. Like it's got to be like we're, we're still not good enough for the Champions League as much as it pains me to say but until we get some proper good players I think the league has to be priority um, so it's one of them ones that that's kind of that's, you've done him then see you later as I'm the host see you later, <laughs> see you later Bob Ta-ra. Um but no I, I would I would love to see us people turn around and say you know I'd love to see Villa win the Champions League I'm like yeah but I'd love to see Villa in my lifetime lift that Premier League trophy. Mm. I, I said when the big six were thinking about being snakes and fucking off, I was like, you know what, Sodom? Because at the end of the day, we could have been if we could have been right up there with financial fair play being uh, scuppered. We could have been right I, up there. It's a fair tale question, isn't it? So you'd rather win the Premier League than the Champions League? Yeah. I would. See, I'm the opposite. I'm Champions League all day long. Yeah. We're elite, you know, we're an elite club. In the, you know, it'd be brilliant, brilliant to see how to, you know, win the Champions League. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. But I, I think it's baby steps, isn't it? More than anything else. I've always, oh, no, I didn't. Sorry, boys. Sorry, boys. <laughs> Bloody doorbell going, you know. No. Sorry, lads. I am sorry. <laughs> but. So, yeah, but it's such a my, my subject, isn't it? Like, I've, I've grown up, like, Back in the days where the FA Cup and the Carling Cup and and the and the league were the main things, and then all of a sudden the Champions League or the, you know the UEFA Cup and the Champions League were you know are the big money making things, you know. And unfortunately, it's like one of my mates said, he's a blue nose. He went, you know, I hate Villa for the fact that you've now got all this money. You know, you're potentially on the verge of bankruptcy. 
you know, the guys came in and saved you, and now you've got literally all this money behind you, and you could just spunk as much as you want. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there in smug mode going, yeah, what's your point? But I can understand because it's one of them ones that, like T said, it, you know, he's he's a Champions League person, but for me, I, I, I love the FA Cup. I love the Carling Cup. And for C Jack lift that trophy, which, again, is we will wait and see, but... For me, it's a fairy tale to see Villa win a win a win a win the Premier League and then potentially win the Champions League or UEFA League or something like that. It's building blocks now, and under these owners, you just got to be excited. Yeah, mm. no, I agree. Europe, yeah. Europe, or the leagues. Though. I've said when you um, Dash oh, goes to 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 Dash goes to toilet. Dash goes to toilet. Champions League for me, mate. Yeah, Champions Champions League. It's the, it's the elite. It's the elite thing to win. In I don't, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to win a Champions League ahead of a, a, a Premier League. Champions League for me, mate. Let's yeah, get that. Yeah, let's get that. I, let's get that second star on the shirt. Yeah, I, I, um, I have to agree. I think. I think for me, the the league is fantastic, but I think Villa need to be back in Europe, and and I think that you know the club of our size, club of our stature, the the, the historic proudness that we have at Villa. I, I think we need to be back in Europe, and whether that's UEFA. Uh, we're for Cup Champions League. I, you know, I don't really care. I just want to get back into Europe. I, I've got oh. fans being invited abroad for away games and, you know, and, and then finishing sixth, seventh, eighth in the league for a few seasons running. But it's a, it is, guys, it's a fairy tale question, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We're not, it. we're not saying we're ever going to win the Premier League. No, we're not no. saying we're ever going to win the Champions yeah. League before you saw all the trolls start tweeting. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. no. I've yeah. said that. A uh, it's a fairy tale question. Of course it is. As is the next one. So, Melberg or Larson? Sorry. I would go Melberg. Simple reason I'd go Melberg. He he had more. He played consistently for me. He didn't really get me injured much, and he hated the Blues. Um, simple as that, really. Larson, you know, great player, but. He had, his, he had his injuries, unfortunately. I just think Melberg was a complete player. And also, Melberg could play full-back if he wanted to, if you want, yeah. want, want to be a bit like that, really. So, yeah, Melberg for me. Dave? Yeah, Melberg. For, for me, it was when I had that them tickets down in the lower north, and you know, which would, came out 200 quid at the time, Melberg was the one player I always watched out for. He, he, you know, he's, he's just his communication with Larson, with the boys in, who were full-backs at the time, you know, he hated the he hates the blues. The gesture he made at West Ham with all them shirts. He you know he paid out of his own money before he went off to Olympiac. You know what? It, you know it, you could turn around and say he was the Paul McGraw of our generation, really. Yeah, you know? I, agree. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah good. So, I, I think I think it would be a full house for Melberg. I think I'd go Melberg as well. Uh, Martin was was certainly one of my favourite players as a as a younger gun. You know, I he was he was phenomenal. I know his time at Villa was pretty short lived in comparison to Melberg and, and other players who played in that position. But um, yeah, I think I go Melberg. He's, he was versatile. You know, I think I think his versatility was a huge thing for Villa. He played right back a few times, central at left back a few times. I think he even played in midfield for a game or two under someone at some point. Yeah, he um, did. you know. So yeah, Olaf was a great 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 pro, and he loved the club, didn't he? And and, it, and his and his dislike for the Blues was just immense and. Um, I don't ever think, although we, we see Martin Larson talk about his time at Villa and how, how proud he was to play for the club, I don't ever feel like he really, truly got to know the real in-depth stuff at Villa because he just wasn't here that long enough, you know. Yeah. Um, he captained the club, great thing, but I think Melberg did as well at times, didn't he, you know, on, on occasion. So, um, yeah, Melberg for me as well, I agree. Full house on Melberg. So, what's the next one, Drew, set us? Ooh, favourite Blues win, Dave. Yeah, one, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why, and I'll give you a story. So, me and my dad, season ticket holders down in the lower north. One of my mates who's a blue nose used to go to every single game. Brings me up and buy Tesco. Base, where are you? Oh, I'm just by Tesco, mate. All right, I'll give you a bell when I'm in the ground. Now, as you know, the villa reception is crap. Was back in the day. It is better now, slightly, but it was crap back in the day. So, me and dad walking into the lower north. No Villa fans whatsoever, but the blue section's getting, you know, quite nice and quite spicy. Anyway, all of a sudden, my phone starts ringing and I go, pets, turn around. And from, from literally where we were, we're about 10 feet 
away from the away fans, which was brilliant. And literally, I could see him clear as a bod and go, based. He's going to go, oh, fuck off, type thing. And he's there going, I can even go, Dave, is that your old man? And literally nudged Mick. I went, Mick, look, it's Pets. <laughs> he's there going, like, oh, old man, 60 odd at the time, stands on the seat, fuck off, you blue nosed twat, at the top <laughs> of his voice. And they go, don't do that. All the blue noses see what he's doing. So you go, you what? Turn around, see my mate Mark's doing exactly the same reaction and go, ah, and give me your man a round of applause. <laughs> and to this day, he still has not forgiven me our man for it. We were at his wedding the other week and he turned around and goes, I still haven't forgiven you for that fucking day. <laughs> so yeah, but that, that was my that was my favorite memory. But yeah, it was that day was just top class. Youngie was just on another level that guy, yeah. that, that, that day. So yeah. awesome. Good one. So si? yeah, mine was five one. Sim- simple reasons were it was a bank holiday weekend. So we all got smashed on the Sunday. Uh the blues have got a better of us a couple of games. The obviously famous Eckleman, um, the riot we had on down the villa the, the season before that was it, when they were giving the big and the blue noses, and Gary Cahill's goal. I mean, it's one of the best goals I'll still see down the villa for, for a long, long time. So yeah, for me, it's, it was a five one. And just to see him crying on a bank holiday weekend, really. The pub got drank dry. Yeah, 5 1, mate. Yeah, sweet. Lovely. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with you for sure. Uh, great game. Great game. Wonderful. Okay, what was next on here? Um, so uh, Drew says it's, it's apparently it's the 40 years European Champions Year this year. No, next, next season is, mate. Next yeah. season. Next season. So um, <laughs> how, how would we like to see the club mark that? How would we like to see. I celebrate that um, with the excitement and the, you know, the phenomenal aurora that's currently around Villa Park, currently around the club, the summer uh, window, et cetera. How, how do we see that? What do we, what do we want to happen? Open top bus, round small leaf. <laughs> Simple. If we don't do it, I'll be very disappointed, to be honest with you. <laughs> next, next. Next, next, Dave. <laughs> Dave. Uh, you know what? For a season, I'd like to see us go back to the round badge just for a season, just to mark. Actually, I love the shirt. I think the shirt, the shirt, I think the shirt, I think I have a shirt as the third kit. Yeah. 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 That's a great idea, that is, Dave. Um, yeah, great idea. I think that's a, that's a sound idea. Or, or, what do you reckon, Dave? If not, keep the badge, but have the star on there. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I'd, I'd go as far as to say, you know what? Have next season's kits like a modern replica of the 82 kits. I think they will. I think they will. I think the white the, the white kit will definitely come in with the pinstripe. Yeah, but do you know and I, I, I think they will. That's interesting you say that. I don't know whether Kappa will do that. We'll see. Is it Kappa? <laughs> again? Is it Kappa for a third season? Yes. Yeah, it is Kappa, mate. And we'll yeah. see. We'll see, shall we? We'll see. So I know something he's not letting on. Yeah, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. They'll def- they're going to go big. They're going to go big in the whole ten, aren't they, with the um, the celebrations? Uh, do you remember the Sheffield United game with all the scarves? Yeah. 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 So I think we'll be doing something very similar to that. Uh, if the fans get in the crowd, I think Villa will, um, these owners are going to make a statement. They're going to go big on it. Hundred yeah. percent going to go big on it. Yeah. Uh, I think there will be some sort of shirt. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. I think uh, I think they'll bring out a mug as well. You love it. You gotta have a good, you know, good I mug. Yeah. mug. I'd love a mug with the, with with something red for it. That that would that would do it for me. Just a just a coffee mug would be great. <laughs> That's the only, the only mugs on here is me and Dave. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm well, asking for. Then, all I'm asking for. The, is only, other, the only other mugs you can do is just do a DVD like them twats down yeah. the road do. Bring a DVD out that you beat Man United for the first time in God knows how many years. <laughs> Or, or they could retire the 40 shirt. You know, I've seen clubs do that. Retire retire shirts for ridiculous reasons. You know, we could do that. It's going to it's gonna be bigger. And I think it depends on the uh, the fixtures we get as well for next season. Like the, the last home game of the season, who we're going to get. But I'll be, amazed, I'll be amazed if we don't go big and, and they make a total statement of it. And we get an open top bus around Small Leaf. And we, yeah. have, a, and we have a plane with a banner on it as well. Yeah, and in, pinatas, yeah. the whole works going. Yeah, Make I want to go. Point. I want to go. I want to go the works. Question for you on shirts, then. So, will we? There's a little bit of talk on on the old twit twit about um, 
us revealing our next season shirts before the end of the season and wearing them for the last game. Do we think that'll happen? Do we think yeah. the new shirts will be released before the next season? Well, I don't think they'll be wearing them the last game. No. No. Chelsea are, aren't they? Well, it's Chelsea. They can do what they want, can't they? Oh. <laughs> good, good luck to them. But I think oh, I think, I... Go on, sorry. Sorry, mate. I don't think we will, Dave. So over to you, mate. Um, judging by what someone said to on the Villa store, because they were talking about changing sizes, etc. I'll try and find the tweet out, but there was a tweet with the Villa store replying back saying the release of the new kits is coming out next month. Um, that's the reason why there's so limited stock on certain shirts, etc. Yeah. Whether that's true or not, you know, there is certain people who know a bit more than uh, Clueless Dave as usual, because I'm no, I'm not IDK anymore, am I? Um, <laughs> Just WKD. Yeah, just WKD. Yeah, just drinking the just drinking the rattle and the WKD in the twenty twenty. Um, that's why I'm so fat these days. Um, so uh, yeah, we don't know. I would love to see it because again, Liverpool tend to do it. Chelsea tend to do it. You know, they play in the yeah, he, he do it, don't they? Yeah, they play. The, it seems to be like a look. He, here you go. This is the preview of what you can have next season. You yeah. know, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a tease, really. But I would love to see us do it. But I can't see us. I think we'll do a reveal, but I can't see it going on sale. I, so. I don't, I don't want them to do it. For no, me, no. a new shirt, a new shirt is a fresh start, fresh yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, it's a new chapter. You know, I like to see. Like, I'm, I'm old school. If you sign some players, get them all in a new shirt. You go yeah. get the pictures. Yeah. Of, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to see him wearing a pretty well, new shirt. I, exactly, I said exactly that side to a, to a group of mates the other day. I said, for me, I don't want to see it revealed. I don't want to know about it until pre-season. <sighs> Yeah, you know, no. it's a new shirt. You know, respect the shirt for this season. Let's finish this season, get it over and done with. Start pre-season and go again with a new shirt and a new look. But I, but but pre-season, I do think we'll have some tasty games. Yeah, mm. very very tasty games. So watch his space. Here's one for you boys. What's been your favourite Villa home shirt in recent history? What would you say has been Luke, your the Luke one, hundred percent. I I think I think I'd go Luke. I, I'm. I was so gutted that I never bought the shirt. I was so so cheesed off about that, but you know, I, I just think they they were they were well made, weren't they? You know, yeah. they, and they looked class. I love the fact that it was Luke Roper. You know, boy Villa fan from this area. Oh man, it was great. Um, I don't. I always hold out hope maybe that Luke might come back into the mix on the shirts at some point. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I guess, or it'll be Adidas, won't it? <laughs> yeah, more than likely. And the Blues will be crying because again. They're you know they're paying us to wear the shirt. I think blues. I think blues are getting gold, aren't they? Gold. Gold. That's in the know, guys. Blues are getting gold. Spread the word. Oh. I used to have a pair of gold popper popper tracksuit bottoms, ones with the poppers down the side. Uh, I, tell you what, I know where you can get some gold from. Go down Blackheath Market. They've got a low down there, mate. I tell you, that's where we're playing the kids next season. <laughs> or Slazinger. Slazinger's in the morning, isn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So just, just wrapping up then slightly, um, closing with some positivity. So we discussed the Palace game, remainder of the season. Uh, where do we finish? Where do we finish this season? I don't think Le- there's a lot of option now, is there? Le- Leeds are winning two mil bones, go, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, so I can't see us finishing 10th now, unfortunately. So it'll be, I think, where we are, 11th. Where we are, not moving. Yeah, it's a shame, it's a shame, really. This season's really fizzled out, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, what, 4-0? Yeah. It's what? I just wanted to, become, I really wanted to become above Leeds. I really wanted to come above Leeds. And, it, yeah. and, and we could have, you know, he's done it a bit wrong in the end of the season. It really yeah. has fizzled out. Leeds beat Burnley 4-0. I've just said, yeah. It's, so, missed opportunities for me, but it is progression. And we just need to go again. What if we keep saying go again next season? I think, I, I think, yeah, I think we'll beat Palace. I think, uh, I think we probably could beat Spurs, but I can't see us beating Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. That's my predictions anyway. Have, have Chelsea got anything to play for really then? No, not really. No, no, no. Uh, but we have got 10,000 fans down there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm more bothered now about the uh, about the kids winning the FA Youth Cup. I'm, I'm yeah. more excited, yeah. you know. Yeah. I had the, so, let, let, let's let, that's progression, getting them winning the FA Youth Cup. But it's going to be a tough one against Liverpool. Yeah. And uh, please, God, don't have those commentators we had last night. See, God, how bad were they? <laughs> hey? 
Probably about as bad as us three doing podcasting, to be honest with you. But they, they, were, they were awful. They were awful, weren't they? Yeah, no, I agree. Last question then, just to throw it in there, just come to the top of my head. JT, uh, will he be with us this time next year? Do, do no. we lose him from the coaching staff? Is he ready to move on? What's his value been at the club? I think JT's been immense. Yeah. I think he's. I think his attitude's been banged on. He's had that bond between the players and the management, which you know yourself yeah. as a you always need. I think guy's been. A, I think the guy's been a breath of fresh air. You you use the word legend loosely. Yeah. And for me, I think he's a bit of a legend. And it's just a shame we never beat Fulham when he could lifted that playoff yeah. final trophy. Uh, do, will he go? Uh, I think he's got a good possibility. There'd be a lot of clubs, isn't there? looking for a, a top manager like him. Um, I could see him ending up like a Bournemouth. I could even see him ending up at a Derby if they get the takeover all sorted. So, yeah, yeah it'd be a shame. I'd be gutted, you know, the day he goes. Because I think he's done so much for the club. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. I really do think he has. He got slated, didn't he, at the beginning for not yeah. sorting, a defense, sorting the defence out as a coach. But, you know, but he has this season, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know... As as any player would, you'd like to think they look up to their manager. I think there's a there's a different edge with with Terry. Is kind of the boys really look up to him, don't they? And the, and, the, and generally, guys, anybody watching this podcast, they, 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 they love JT. Yeah, they absolutely love JT. They they, they they you know the guys a nice guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I tell you very quickly, but just very quickly, the JT shows how nice a guy is. We met him um, at a, an after playoff final party, shall we say, wink, wink. And um, there were some players there who were stubborn. I'm not going to call them out. JT was going in the lift. We came over to him and said, oh, JT, do you want to have a drink and, you know, have a chat? He was taking his wife and his um, and a family member back up to the hotel room. He put his foot in the lift door, put his wife up on the lift and had a drink and a chat with us. That's the kind of guy he is. He didn't have to do that. Because yeah. a, a lot of the players were just wandering off and so couldn't give a damn, really. But yeah. JT, and, and you know what? From that day on, it just sticks to me. He generally is a nice guy and he, and he generally does love the club. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, can see that. The doesn't. way he talks about it, the way he posts about it on, on Instagram and the way he talks about the club in, in, in you know, spur of talk. He is, and, he is. He does love the club. As a look at that, what he did for the um, for that guy doing the, the marathons or the runs yeah. recently. Yeah. He's, yeah. Just, he's just, he's just, he's just a, you know, he has a lot of bad press, JT does. I, th- I think he's been brilliant for the club. And I, I think it'll be a sad day when he leaves that coach and stuff. I agree. I agree. What are your views, Dave? You agree? I, I think I echo the same as what uh, T has said. You know, I think um, a lot of people criticised JT, you know, first season. I think them getting Shakespeare on, on, on as well, I think that's helped massively. Um, you know, the, the second half of the season's filtered out a bit, which is a bit a bit of a shame, really. But yeah, from what from what I can gather, that you know, the boys absolutely adore JT. I think I think it's like that little father figure, you know, you know, like you know, Smith's the headmaster who's bollocking them for left, right, and center, and JT's the one who's going, Come here, lads, come here. You know, come and have yeah. a chat. He's, yeah. he's that sort of father figure, and I think that's what they look up to. And I, I agree with T. I think. You know, there was there was talk of JT going to Bournemouth. There were, you know, just before Woodgate went, and there was also talk of him going to Bristol City and possibly Derby before Rooney went there. But I I agree with T. I think if I think if Derby do get finally taken over, they'll be sniffing around for a JT. Also, it'll be a big loss, JT, because he attracts players. If we're after so-called big players and transfer money, people want to play for JT. Yeah. They want to play for Smith, but you know, to see JT in, in um in a coaching staff, I don't want to, they want to learn from him. So yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, JT, he'll be JT's a massive the loss. difference between a, a leather belt and a nice Gucci gold Armani one, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's exactly uh, that's, that's the, that's well the cool. and that and that guy's will be the title of the YouTube yeah. clip. Yeah, <laughs> he is. I, I think he's been class, you know. I I, I, I have a lot of time for him. I think I think he's been class. And the day that he leaves the club will be a, will be a sad day. I'm sure the right replacement will come in. But And he's done his learning. He's done his learning to become yeah. a manager the right way. He's yeah. not jumped into anything. He's had loads and loads of offers. He's done it the right way. Yeah. I'll put um, it out right now. JT will manage England one day. Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I could agree with that. Yeah. His, his next club is suited for JT, isn't it? And I think yeah. I think he could do well at someone like Derby. Yeah, I agree. 
I think I think he needs to and I think he needs to go like the route that um like starting from lower down, not like what Lampard did, like literally let's go straight to Chelsea. Because at the end of the day, towards the end of Lampard's era, you saw all the stuff what we saw with Derby. And when we got Derby in the final, we knew we knew we were gonna win that because we beat them. What was it? Six what, the, the, the stupid score lines we played against them, and we knew the tactics would but you saw it filtering out in the Chelsea side towards the end of his era. Yeah. You know, I think I think if JT goes off even to even to a League One side, like uh, you know, or you know, I love a championship show like a Coventry, which I can't really see him doing because never, uh, never, never, Dave. Never. And about also, never. also, it's quite a fairy tale again, isn't it? His, his last game at home will be against Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope he sticks around, but let's see. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, good. All right, boys. So we'll we'll call it a day there. Um, I think that's enjoyed it, Dave. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for coming on, Dave. No problems. Anytime, boys. Lovely to have you, mate. And um, and we'll speak again soon. Up the villa. Up the villa. Good hour, bit. You stopped recording, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs>